The Battle of Nuila was the last major battle fought by Australian and New Zealand forces in South Vietnam. The battle was fought in the former Phuc Thuy province between elements of the People's Army of Vietnam 33rd Regiment, and B and companies of the 4R-NZ Battalion and during Operation Ivanhoe. Nuila, a small hill within Quang Than Commune in Chao Duc District, is today in Ba Ria Vung Tau Province. Chapter 1 Background The decision for the Australian withdrawal from Vietnam was made by the Australian government and commenced in November 1970 and combat forces were to be reduced gradually during 1971. Intelligence pointed towards a major build-up of Viet Cong and People's Army of Vietnam forces in the north of Phuc Thuy province and abductions and assassinations had increased in the adjacent Long Kang province. The VC slash Paven were preparing for the withdrawal of the first Australian task force from Phuc Thuy province, which was gradually being withdrawn from August 1971, and were hoping to defeat the Australians. Chapter 2 Prelude 4R-NZ Battalion, consisting of two companies of Australian Infantry and one company of New Zealand Infantry, was committed to a reconnaissance in force operation, named Operation Ivanhoe against any paven vc forces in the north of former Phuc Thuy province. D Company, 3rd Battalion, Royal Australian Regiment, 1st Troop, a squadron, 3rd Cavalry Regiment, 4th Troop, C Squadron, 3rd Cavalry Regiment, 2 Troop, 104th Field Battery, elements of 104th Signal Squadron, and 161st Recce Squadron, were also committed to the operation. 1ATF Command had gained intelligence that Paven 33rd Regiment had entered the province with the 33rd Regiment Headquarters and 3rd Battalion. Unknown to 1ATF intelligence was that not only had the 3rd Battalion entered, but so had 2nd Battalion, 33rd Regiment. Between the two battalions Paven numbers amounted to approximately 1,100 well-trained soldiers. The company were positioned west of Route 2 conducting search and destroy patrols with three guns from 104th Field Battery to support them. D Company patrolled east of Route 2. The company patrolled south near Bean Bar, with the other three guns of 104th Field Battery and one of the troops of M113 armored personnel carriers. Paven forces fired rockets and mortars at a South Vietnamese regional force outpost at Cam Mai village on Route 2 on 19 September 1971. The Australian M11S sent to investigate and relieve the outpost were ambushed and came under attack from rocket-propelled grenades and small arms fire from what was considered to be large force. 11 platoon of D Company 4R-NZ made contact with a Paven platoon on 20 September and after a half-hour skirmish, four dead soldiers were found on the battlefield. Their uniforms and equipment and study of the tactics used during the skirmish pointed toward the unit being from the Paven. Tracks made by the Paven force indicated about 200 soldiers had passed through the area. The commander of the Paven 33rd Regiment, Colonel Win Van Tuang, had received reports from VC spies that most of the Australian artillery was being packed up for shipping back to Australia therefore it was expected that any fight between Paven and Australian forces would be between infantry forces alone. The Paven commander set a number of ambushes for the expected Australian relief forces, however the Australians did not follow the route that was expected by the Paven and went around the ambush sites instead. Chapter 3 Rattle Patrols by 11 Platoon, D Company 4R-NZ on the morning of 21 September, found sawn logs near the southeastern part of the Courtney Rubber Plantation which suggested that there were major fortified bunker positions nearby. B and D Company 4R-NZ moved forward near Nuila to attack these fortifications. 12 Platoon, D Company 4R-NZ made first contact with a bunker system containing the security elements of 33rd Regiment's headquarters, suffering one dead from an RPG and four wounded. An estimated platoon strength assault attacked 11 platoon, and after a 15-minute firefight the Paven forces withdrew to their bunkers after removing their dead and wounded from the battlefield. 
11 and 12 platoons were ordered to withdraw to an area to the south so airstrikes and artillery could be called in to soften up the bunker systems. Under the control of the forward observer, United States Air Force airstrikes were called in and F-4 Phantoms and A-37 Dragonflies bombed the area with napalm, air-to-surface missiles, flechette and 500-pound bombs. Iroquois and Cobra helicopter gunships and Australian artillery strikes also hit the bunker system. The American pilots reported Paven forces fleeing to the north. However this was a deceptive move by the Paven in that they deliberately sent soldiers running from the scene of an attack to create the misbelief that they had abandoned the fight. At 1400 hours, D Company was ordered forward to search and destroy the bunker systems. Unknown to the Australians at that time was that the bunker system, was manned by the 33rd Regiment's 2nd Battalion, and they had not in fact fled after the previous fight as aerial intelligence had reported. The Paven let the Australians advance some 50 metres into the bunker complex before opening fire, killing three soldiers and wounding two from 11 platoon. Many grenades thrown by the Paven did not explode, reducing casualties. This was fought hand-to-hand -hand as the Centurion tanks of the 1st Armoured Regiment had previously been withdrawn from South Vietnam. 12 platoon was also pinned down and could not move forward. The bodies of the three Australian soldiers who had been killed could not be recovered and orders were given to pull back, which under heavy fire did not happen until 1600 hours. Just as the sun was setting the Anzac forces ran into the 2nd Paven Battalion, with the commanding officer of 11 platoon, Gary Mackay being hit twice by a sniper's bullet in the shoulder. It was now pitch black and the forward observer, Captain Greg Gilbert, unable to use his map or compass, and unable to speak to the company commander, Major Jerry Taylor, brought artillery fire to within 25 meters of the company under difficult circumstances as more Paven forces joined the battle. To compound the artillery problem the company was in range of only three guns and these were at the limit of their range. The Paven commander subsequently realized the error of the VC intelligence about there being no artillery, and the Paven disengaged at 2100 hours just as the Australians were running low on ammunition. Chapter 4, Aftermath After a number of hours of fighting the elements of the Paven 33rd Regiment pulled out of the bunker system and moved north after recovering the dead and wounded they could carry. The Australian wounded were evacuated by helicopter in the morning of the 22nd of September. Five Australians had been killed and 30 wounded. Total Paven losses are unknown, however 14 bodies were found on the battlefield. On the same day at 1739 the New Zealanders of V Company Mazir moved up to reinforce D Company in anticipation of an attack however the day passed with no enemy attack or activity. On the 23rd of September, D and V Companies moved back into the area of the bunkers. The company began the assault on the Paven bunker system at 11.05 moving in very short bounds in torrential rainfall through bomb and artillery craters and fallen timber and it was not until 17.25 that they reached the bunkers where they found the bodies of three Australians from 11 platoon who had been killed in the assault the day before. The Paven had fully vacated the bunker system. The company cleared a track to a helicopter winch point and the New Zealand riflemen shouldered arms and formed an impromptu guard of honour in tribute as members of D Company moved forward with litters for the fallen. For his role in the battle, 2nd Lieutenant Gary Mackay, who was badly wounded, received the military cross. Captain Gilbert was awarded the Distinguished Service Medal in 2018 for his actions during the battle.